Saint Seiya. Next dimension of the myth of Hades is a manga that constitutes the official and canonical sequel to the already classic Saint Seiya, written and drawn by Masami Kurumada, creator of the original series. The idea was born after the year 2004, after the Tenkai Hen Overture animated movie debuted. It was going to constitute the true sequel of the story and that would tell everything that happened immediately after volume 28. Such efforts were carried out discarding very important ideas that the author had contributed. These events would end up causing his anger, later removing it from the canonical chronology. As a result, a couple of years later, Sensei decides to personally take charge of this story and begins to draw the next dimension. The prologue of this new series was published on April of 2006 in the pages of the weekly champion Shonen, surprising thousands of fans around the world. The manga is published irregularly and to date it has published 81 chapters, one prologue and two specials compiled in 11 volumes. The plot and the number of characters are somewhat extensive, so we'll make a short summary. Now, the story begins just after the battle against Hades in the Elysian Fields, where Seiya is seriously wounded by his sword. As a consequence of that, the Saint of Pegasus remains in a wheelchair with the curse of the god of the underworld still in his chest, which leaves him one margin of life of only three days. Saori, accompanied by Shun of Andromeda, set out to help him. They travel to Olympus, where they receive the help from the time god Kronos, who sends them back to the time of the previous holy war that occurred 243 years ago. Their plan is simple, to steal and vanish the sword of the god of the underworld to change the future and thus prevent the saint of Pegasus from being hurt by it. On Mount Olympus, we also know the first characters that will be part of a future saga of heaven such as Artemis, goddess of the moon and older sister of Athena, her personal servant Callisto, her army of satellites, and are led by Las Commune, I'll post the name here, and brings along an angel at the service of the kingdom of heaven. Upon reaching the past, Saori is turned into a baby due to a joke that the god of time plays on her body. Shun, for his part, quickly establishes a friendship with Tenma, the saint of Pegasus of that time, whose best friend called Alone had ended revealing himself as the incarnation of Hades of that time. Also came to the past was Iki of Phoenix, Shiryu of Dragon, and Hyoga of Swan. From this point, the sanctuary of the 18th century becomes the epicenter of the main plot which in turn has its own in it of itself. Well, in the statue of Athena, the life of the baby goddess is in danger at the hands of an apparently traitorous patriarch. A greater evil is looming with the imminent appearance of the Temple of the Serpent Bearer and the resurrection of his golden guardian, Saint Odysseus of Ophiuchal. Odysseus is the reincarnation of Asclepius, again I'll post the name here, the 13th golden saint of the Ophiuchus constellation, who in the mythological era was banished from the sanctuary for having believed himself a god. He was known as the most powerful saint of the 88 and possessed the ability to heal the sick and wounded. Many gold saints have been saved by Odysseus and are still indebted to him. To avoid this event, which would mean an apocalypse, Suikyo, an ancient silver saint of the cup and master of Tenma of Pegasus, now turned into the specter of Garuda in the service of Hades, invades the sanctuary in order to secretly inform others about the evil looming. 
During this tour of the 12 temples, we are introduced to the ancient gold saints one by one. In addition to the already known Sion of Arius or Arius and Doko of Livra, the only survivors of this holy war and childhood friends of Suikyo, they also stand out. Shuima of Virgo, a heroic saint who manages to save the goddess from the patriarch's clutches and other dangers. Cain and Abel of Gemini brothers, one good, the other evil. When one appears, the other disappears. Its mystery is not yet revealed. Death Toll of Cancer, a charismatic character who spends his days building coffins for the souls in distress who roam his temple and who does not hesitate to change sides when the situation seems convenient. And Gestalt of Sagittarius, a saint with deep psychological traumas produced in his childhood which leads him to be perceived by others with the illusory form of a centaur and who will not hesitate to support Odysseus when he is resurrected. So exciting and entangled is the next dimension plot with characters that move away from the classic manichaeism of absolute good versus absolute evil. The protagonists are complex and have nuances that make them unique. The next season will begin soon. Are you gonna miss it? Thanks so much for watching guys. Thanks so much for making it to the end. If you like this video, please give it a like. Share it around with your friends and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Take care.